Bitcoin. 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 It's all the rage. But what the hell is it? Bitcoin is uh, gold for nerds, if you will. This digital currency, it's only online. A Bitcoin can be sent directly from one owner's digital wallet to another anywhere in the world without going through financial institutions. No government, no central bank. So why would you put trust in something like that? People yeah. are tired of the Fed printing, tired of the yen just crashing, tired of European banks coming in and just taking your money. Bitcoin is going bananas. At this moment, do I buy or sell Bitcoin? It's similar to how Henry Ford used the, the manufacturing line, the assembly line to change manufacturing. That's what Bitcoin is going to be doing to financial services. Can I get a medium coffee? Sure. Thanks. I'm pretty much like everybody else. I mean, I've heard the news stories of Bitcoin, but I really don't know what it is. I've heard it's a digital currency that enables you to pay people directly without the interference of banks or credit cards or even the government. Some people say it's the wave of the future, that one day we'll be able to pay for everything from houses to a cup of coffee. Thank you. But is the world ready to go totally virtual when it comes to payments? I'm going to figure that out and put Bitcoin to the test by seeing if I can live off it. Money, money, money. It's something we use every single day. But have you ever stopped to think about how it works or what gives money value? Cash used to be based on the gold standard, meaning its value was directly tied to the price of gold. But the US effectively moved off of the gold standard after the Great Depression. As a result, they could print up more cash and put it into circulation. But that also put the economy at a greater risk of inflation, debt, and volatile investment bubbles. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. The global sell-off triggered by Lehman Brothers bankruptcy and the forced sale of another financial fixture in the United States, Merrill Lynch. This is all about politicians and greedy banks. What started in America last year has now spread to every part of the world. So how do you protect everyday people against financial institutions, corrupt governments, and unpredictable economic forces? Q Bitcoin. Its founder wanted to create a global currency that existed outside of a central bank or government. Just a person-to-person -person system that could be used instantly and internationally. And with economies constantly in flux and currencies around the world failing, is Bitcoin the future of money? So I'm going to try and do some digging, figure it out. And right now, I'm in the heart of New York City's financial district, just a stone's throw from the New York Stock Exchange and Wall Street. Right next to me, the Bitcoin Center the hub of the Bitcoin community for New York City. And hopefully the people inside there are going to give me some answers. <laughs> Sellers will sell your Bitcoin at 625. Since Bitcoin is a digital currency, it's usually bought and sold online. But the Bitcoin Center is a place where you can meet other Bitcoin enthusiasts, learn how to get started, and buy some face-to-face. -face. It's like a really smart guy's frat party in here. Really sweaty, a lot of smart dudes. The center is also like a temple for the Bitcoin faithful. And today, Bitcoin guru Andreas Antonopoulos is here to preach. Bitcoin is much more than just a currency. It is a network for transmitting value across the world without reference to nations, without caring who the sender and who the recipient is. This invention in 2008 created a fundamentally new concept. There is no central authority. I was in Argentina recently talking about Bitcoin. And whereas here in the United States, I have to explain to people why Bitcoin is important. In Argentina, I don't have to explain it, because just in the last 20 years, they've seen their entire economy destroyed twice because of hyperinflation. And in many places around the world, like for example in Cyprus, the government colluded with the banks to dip into people's deposits and wipe them out. For these people, Bitcoin is much more than just a currency. This is an opportunity to connect with a world economy where they can trade, 
they can have access to loans and credit and where they can send their money to other countries whenever they want without their government stealing from them, without their banks stealing from them. That is why Bitcoin can change the world. Thank you. I am so intrigued by the possibilities of something like this. I'm getting all rah-rah fired up and uh, I want to get a wallet. I want to get some Bitcoin. I want to be a part of the party. Sign me up. Who's buying some Bitcoin? Come on! Right now, one Bitcoin is valued at about $624. It's just like converting U.S. dollars to any foreign currency. The exchange rate varies depending on when you convert. But first, in order to get some digital money, I need a digital wallet. So you want to search up uh, Aegis wallet? That's one of the top ones right now. Install that, click that. So now I've got my Bitcoin wallet. Yes. So this is an NFC chip. Okay. So this is your password. So you don't have to use your password. So if anyone wanted to steal your Bitcoins, they have to steal your phone and your chips. Tap it to the back of your phone. So now it's encrypting your wallet, right? That's genius. Right, so this is your Bitcoin address. You think of it as an email address too, yeah. where they send Bitcoins to that address. So now if I want to buy Bitcoins here tonight, yeah. what do I have to do? So you're gonna have to place uh, a bid and ask order okay. with the guy right there. So he's gonna match you with somebody else that's willing to sell. So there are people here tonight like paying cash, like giving cash for Bitcoins. Yeah, basically. Awesome. This place is no different from any other auction house, but instead of bidding on art, I'm bidding on Bitcoin. So uh, what do I got to do to buy some Bitcoins? How much you want to buy? One. One, okay. The market's 627, buyers are paying that. Okay. 634. You can say 630 right now, and then you become the best bid in the market. Okay, great. Then let's go for 630 right now. Okay. Give me a minute, I'll squawk it out. Okay, he's going to squawk it out. 627 bid, 627 bid. 634 ask. 33. At 33. We're 627 bid, 633 ask. 31. 31. Okay. 31. We're 628 bid. One coin. One 631 coin. 631 ask. 628 bid. 631 Can you go 30? Can you go 30? I have no idea what's happening. 629 bid. 630. 630 trade. 630 trade. So, so I'm buying 630 from you. Yeah. Okay. So now explain it to me. No problem. You're going to have to hit receive. Okay, so here, I receive this, right? Yep. So and I'm going to hit send. Okay. So I'm going to scan your QR code. Send. He's scanning my code. Watch this. Here it goes. 630 was the last trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't move. Don't move. He's scanning my code. Now he's entering the amount. So I'm just going to sell you a thousand millibits or one BTC, one Bitcoin. A thousand millibits. Right. I bought this now. Yeah, you okay. can you can go many decimals. That's one of the strengths of Bitcoin. Okay. So I, I I can I can send you like twenty cents if you want. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna send it. It's leaving me now. Check your wallet. So I'm going back to my wallet. It should start saying receiving. There it is. There it is. <clears throat> there it is. So what it costs for you to send this to me was six tenths of one cent of one cent that's pretty cheap every time i wire money every month through my free checking free wire account it costs me 25 bucks so you just sent me 623 dollars for six tenths of one cent correct that's incredible it is it is there's six there's seven seven more. this man hey. sold me my first bitcoin sold that means buyers around us will pay six tenths for their bitcoin sellers will sell you bitcoin I don't know about you, but tonight my mind blown right out of my skull. This whole thing is so bananas. Um, I, don't, I still don't understand it, but best part is I got some. I got some right here. I got some Bitcoin tonight. I don't know how to use it. I don't know really what to do with it, but I'm gonna figure that out. Now that I have my new and completely invisible currency, it's time to see what it can do. So today is day one of Mission Bitcoin. I'm going to do my best to live only off my new digital money. But before I do, there are a few things I have to remember. First, Bitcoin is really just like any other currency, the same as dollars, euros, or yen, but it's global. Second, rather than having to go through a credit card or a bank, Bitcoin transactions have no middleman. The result? A cheaper, quicker, and easier way to use money. Third, it's anonymous. Well, sort of. 
the identity of the user remains unknown except for a string of randomly generated numbers associated with their wallet. So I got my Bitcoin, and the good news is it's actually gone up in value today. You see, Bitcoin, like the stock market, fluctuates based on demand. More people are buying Bitcoin, the value goes up. People start selling it, the value goes down. And today, it's up, so that's a good day. Okay, time to blow some millibits. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. You guys take Bitcoin? We do. That's fantastic news. I would guess that, because you got this. Yes. That's the, that's the telltale sign. Exactly. Then I would like to buy a slice of pizza. A margarita. Okay. And, uh, and a bottle of water. That's going to be 527 and 0 0.0083 Bitcoins. 0 0.0083 Bitcoins. Yes. Now, how do, I, how do I do this? I send, right? Right. Amount to send. So I type it in there, right? Change this to bit because you don't want 0 0.0083 dollars. No, that's not enough money. That's not, enough, that's not even a penny. <laughs> Since a whole Bitcoin is worth about $630 right now, when I convert to a dollar value, this slice of pizza costs just a fraction of one Bitcoin. Okay. Here we go. Woo, look at that. We're living in the future, buying pizza in the millibits. See, I've got to tap my tag that I got the other night. I got to put that there. It's in my wallet. Done. Did it go through? Let's go back. Sweet. Ding. Sold. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was so easy. Look at that. Pow. Boop, 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 boop. Bing, 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 bing. I'm the king of Bitcoin. Slice of pizza, check. Hour one of Bitcoin life, and I'm already winning. That was surprisingly easy, but man cannot live on pizza alone. So my next stop is for some groceries. Well set. I'm all set. You got the iPad checkout, you got the MacBook register. We do. You're already a store of the future here. <laughs> What's the upside for you to Bitcoin? In terms of comparative to credit cards, it's cheaper than credit cards, no chargebacks. We receive the money instantly. That I've never had a single issue and we've probably done close to a thousand transactions, I'd say. Wow. And compare that, compare that to like a credit card, out of a thousand transactions, how many of those would you get? 15 to 20%. Whether it be chargebacks. And that's somebody saying that was a chargeback or a theft or Yeah, or I mean, because, you know, credit card fraud is so prevalent today. Yeah. Um, and, you know, as a small business owner, you assume that risk. And so there was another option to where, you know, that was cheaper, that was safer. Bitcoin at this point in time is able to do that. So the total right now is 4272. Yep. Yeah, that's 0 0.067 Bitcoin. 0 0.067. Mm -hmm. You scan that QR code okay. right there. Great. So Dan, thanks for your time, No man. problem. Also, that ding, was that, was that the money coming That little ding was letting me know that, hey, you sent a payment. So the rest is history. Awesome. Thanks, All man. Right, Have a good boy. day. Brooklyn Bodegas, always on the cutting edge. But I wonder who else in the neighborhood takes Bitcoin? Oh. Thank you, Bitcoin, for making this happen. So far, living in the Bitcoin world has been incredibly simple. But I'd be lying if I said it doesn't feel kind of surreal. So, you had a good time? That was good. <laughs> 20 US dollars. So where does Bitcoin come from? Here we go. Boop. And who created it? Back in 2008, someone named Satoshi Nakamoto released the white paper, a sort of manifesto outlining why Bitcoin was created. It was intended to subvert normal currency and be something that couldn't be manipulated by traditional financial or governmental institutions. The paper also outlined the programming code that would make up the structure of Bitcoin. But to this day, no one really knows who Satoshi really is. In March 2014, Newsweek incorrectly said it was this guy. But if we don't know who made it, how do we know it's safe? And how do we know it's a safe place to put our money? Luckily, I'm meeting Dan Kaminsky, a legendary hacker who, amongst other things, fixed a fatal flaw in the internet. Good to see you. Great to be here. The entire internet. If anyone can shed some light on how safe the Bitcoin code is, it's him. What is the best way to describe what you do? I break things. You break things. <laughs> then I get them fixed. Yeah. I'm a hacker, yeah. professional hacker, one of what's called the white hats. So there are people out there who break stuff and then unfortunately steal things. I go ahead and I find the flaws in the systems that we depend on in everyday life and then work together with industry and government and other researchers to make the internet a safer place. And so when you first heard of Bitcoin, what did you think? I thought, wow, this is going to fall immediately. So I decided I would set out for a couple months to show where Bitcoin's problems were. And what happened? It didn't fall. Not Which, at all? 
No, it was really weird. Every single time I hit on something that had to be its fatal failing, no, they had found that before. You could sort of see in the code where that had once been an issue and they had gotten rid of it. It is a beautiful system. Now, don't get me wrong, there have been problems. What we call the meta code, the code around Bitcoin. Yeah. That stuff's been hacked. But the core system, the core magic, the core problem that Bitcoin solved that had never been solved before remains solid. It's safe. And is it getting safer? I think so. Yeah. The technology being built to support Bitcoin, this new generation of meta code, this new hardware, this new software, not just being useful to secure Bitcoin, but being able to secure a lot of the problems we have in computer security today. Are you Satoshi Nakamoto? I am absolutely not, and you're not the first person to ask. <laughs> How do I know you're telling me the truth? Would this space lie to you? <laughs> Excuse me, do you, do you take Bitcoin? We don't take it, I'm afraid. No. You don't? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want me to grab this? That would be, I, I don't have any cash. All right. Sorry, thank you. Okay, so now I owe Dan lunch. Bitcoin fail. Thank you. <laughs> so if everything is as transparent as Dan says, I should be able to see how Bitcoin works and how it's created. Turns out the heart of Bitcoin is a series of digital mines all around the world. And fortunately, there's one I can check out in upstate New York. And of course, I'm living my whole life with Bitcoin now, so I've got to book my travel with Bitcoin. Thankfully, there are a few travel sites that actually do take the Bitcoin. I found one air travel site that takes it, so now I've got to book my travel from New York to Rochester. I'll put in my dates, okay. Choose Bitcoin, type in my code. And boom, I just booked a flight with Bitcoin. And I booked my hotel. A little Bitcoin magic coming through. I'm ready to head upstate, just that easy. Thank you, Bitcoin. It's day two of Mission Bitcoin, and I'm surviving only on the virtual money for an entire week. The value of my Bitcoin has dropped a little, but even though it's down a few dollars, it's still serving me well. I got groceries, a relaxing massage, and booked my travel to beautiful Geneva, New York. There's a mining operation in town, and its founder, Hayden Gill, has agreed to let me do some work and hopefully help me understand what Bitcoin mining actually is. Hey, how are you? Good. I'm Morgan. Morgan, Hayden. How are you, nice man? Nice to meet you. you. Yeah, you too. This is so not what I expected. Yeah? Yeah. I worked in a coal mine. Okay. And like, you, like you think mining, you think if somebody's going underground, you got like a pick, you know, you got a shovel, you right. know, you're in somewhere like ding, ding. Right. This is not what you imagine. No, this is not what you imagine. We got to make you part of the team though. There you are, your coin that. miner shirt. You're an official coin miner now. Nice. Welcome to the new era of mining, where work boots and a pickaxe are traded in for a polo shirt and a processor. Today I'm building a Bitcoin miner, setting up crazy powerful processors that need to be connected so they can all work together and access the Bitcoin network. But what does that actually mean? If mining for gold is the process of digging into the ground and looking for metal, with digital mining, computers are constantly digging to solve complex math problems. And just like there was a race to see who could mine the gold the quickest, there's a race to see who can solve the math problems first. Once a miner solves the problem, they earn 25 brand new Bitcoin, releasing them into circulation. With paper money, a government decides when to print and release more. But Bitcoin isn't backed by a central government or bank. In fact, from the outset, it was decided that there will be only 21 million Bitcoin released in total, helping to fight inflation. Right now, about 13 million are in circulation. 
As the popularity of Bitcoin increases, the Bitcoin network automatically changes the difficulty of the math problem miners need to solve. That means it continually takes more power and more energy to release the new Bitcoin, stabilizing the rate that new Bitcoin are released into circulation. So when will all of the Bitcoin finally be mined out? Well, it's not currently projected to happen until 2140. After all your hard work today, we'll give you the honors to uh, fire up this rack, as we like to say. So when I so when I flip that switch, it'll start it'll start mining. Right. These things will light up, connect online, and verify their IP, and then go to work. Awesome. All right, here we go. Fans on. That's it right there. Now that we've set up a new miner, let's see how it's working on the Bitcoin network. This takes us over to the blockchain. This block contained 519 different transactions. So this blockchain thing Hayden is showing me is actually a key part of what makes Bitcoin so innovative, and it ties into the work miners do. Here's the deal. Those complex math problems the miners are doing to release the new Bitcoin also verify all the Bitcoin transactions worldwide. Remember when I bought that slice of pizza back in Brooklyn? The second I clicked send on my wallet, the transaction was transmitted to the Bitcoin network. It's at that stage that miners, like Hayden, actually confirm the transaction. They make sure I have enough Bitcoin to pay for the slice, bundle it with other transactions, and post them all to an online public ledger. That's what the blockchain is. A record of every single Bitcoin transaction anyone on the internet can check out. And the algorithm, or intense math problem that posts to the blockchain, is the same one that releases new Bitcoin. The takeaway? Instead of placing all your trust in one bank or one credit card, you're relying on a worldwide network that's based on indisputable math. This is all that open ledger. So these are all the different wallet IDs pushing Bitcoin to other wallet IDs. Right. These are all the transactions contained in the block. This is your real-time Bitcoin transactions happening around the world. And since this transaction just came onto the network, it's still working to be confirmed. You gotta wait for the miners then to come in and, and then get them actually linked into the blockchain. This is what makes Bitcoin so amazing. The ability for people to transfer value without having any kind of a centralized authority to have control of those transactions. It's amazing. What have you guys brought in today? What's the total so far? So far today, we've probably brought in about three Bitcoin. Okay. So it's been, about, 18, uh, about 1800 bucks. Yeah, got some money to pay you. Nice, is this what I've been waiting for? See, I've actually earned some Bitcoin. What's a fair day's wage? For the hours work you put in today, we'll do 0.3 Bitcoin. That's gonna be like uh, almost 200 bucks. There we are. 0.3, right there it is. Look at that, less than a minute. Yep. Instantly, boom. Nice. nice. There we go. All right. It's incredible to see how much computing power and how much energy it takes just to mine a few Bitcoin. But if it wasn't for guys like this, if it wasn't for miners all around the world, then you wouldn't be able to verify all of those transactions. You wouldn't be able to get new Bitcoin. I wouldn't be able to buy the slice of pizza that I bought back in Brooklyn. And now, since I've actually earned a little bit of Bitcoin today, I'm gonna go see if I can't spend some here in Geneva. you guys take Bitcoin? Uh, no, we don't. I'm sorry. We don't accept Bitcoin here. Can you recommend anywhere else where I might be able to go in town? This is my wallet right here. It's not a phone. Okay. So maybe I overestimated the popularity of Bitcoin just a little bit. And in time, some of these restaurants might start accepting Bitcoin, but not until it becomes immensely more popular, which doesn't help me at all right now as my stomach's going... <laughs> All I wish is that I could actually like eat Bitcoin because I'm starving. It's only been three days living off Bitcoin, but right now it feels like years. I've had to take what I can get when it comes to Bitcoin accepting merchants. Around my office, there are countless coffee shops, and I'm convinced one of them somewhere will actually take and accept Bitcoin. And good news, Bitcoin's actually up today. Time to celebrate with a cup of joe. Hello. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Do you guys take Bitcoin? Uh, we take the, the what? Do you guys take Bitcoin? We don't. It just seems like another process to deal with. Right. 
People are like, oh, it's just like cash. Well, then why not just use cash? Right. <laughs> Thanks. She's right. Cash is king. But we all rely on plastic more and more. And Bitcoin is the digital way to emulate a cash-like transaction. It's non-traceable, peer-to-peer, and there's no middleman. Do you guys take Bitcoin? No, we don't. Okay. Getting a cup of coffee is a lot more difficult than I expected. Ironically, even though Bitcoin can't fuel my caffeine addiction, it can get me some way more illegal substances. And while we are on the topic of illegal drugs, the FBI says it has arrested a San Francisco man who allegedly ran an underground website for selling drugs, documents, and services. The website is called The Silk Road, and Joe Vasquez says that users could buy anything they wanted, from heroin to hitmen. 29-year-old Ross William Ulbrich, who reportedly used the name Dread Pirate Roberts to run the Silk Road website, was charged in New York District Court this week. Court documents say Silk Road sold $1.2 billion worth of drugs and illegal services in just under three years. Ulbrit, of course, has pled not guilty on all the charges being made against him. The operation used a cyber currency called bitcoins, which are independent of financial institutions, making them hard to trace. Ulbricht also allegedly designed his site outside the regular internet, instead setting it up on the Tor network, a service that allows users to surf the web anonymously. There's the World Wide Web we know and use every day, but it's actually only 4% of the whole internet. The remaining 96% is a subsurface area that can't be found through standard web searches. After Silk Road got shut down in October 2013, it didn't take long for new marketplaces to pop up in its place. Just a month later, Silk Road 2.0 appeared on the scene. Naturally, I want to take a look at it. Don't you? Hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Good, I'm Morgan. Good to see you. Sorry, and who better to show me around than the former FBI agent behind the original Silk Road takedown, Chris Tarbell. So I've got some Bitcoins. Can you show me how I would spend some if I went into the, uh, into the deep web and went on to Silk Road? I can show you how to buy something not illegal if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Sure, done. We're gonna buy something not illegal. Not illegal. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is Tor. Once you've uh, downloaded the special Tor software from their website. This is what I'll see. This is what you see. So we're about to go in Silk Road 2.0. This is the new version of the deep web marketplace where you can buy and sell illegal goods just like any other online marketplace, you need to set up a username and password. You're in, that easy. There's the Silk Road Anonymous Market. I can get drugs, alcohol, apparel, art, biotic materials, books, collectibles, computer equipment, custom orders, digital goods, drug paraphernalia, electronics, erotica, forgeries, hardware, herbs and supplements, jewelry, lab supplies, lotteries and games, medical money, packaging, services, writing. Writing. It's like I can get somebody to do my term paper. Sure. What is that? Is that what yeah, that is? Yeah. <laughs> or, or just old term papers. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I want to see what I can get in forgeries. Let's see what that is. Here you can get handcrafted high quality South Carolina novelty slash fake ID. It's funny on that first one, uh, that's, they use the picture of Ross Ulbrich. Oh, is that who that is? Yeah. Can we go up to the prescription medication? 3,355 possibilities. And there you can get Xanax. Diazepam, Viagra, Zopiclone, Valium, Modafinil, Oxycontin. Generic. It's, it's a grab bag. We should probably go to psychedelics. Hazenberg's got a bunch of stuff on here. You can buy MDMA, cocaine, ecstasy, LSD, top quality products from a name you can trust. If you're buying stuff like this, where does it get sent? I mean, do people just send this to their homes? Some people do, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what could I buy if I was gonna buy something that say wasn't, uh, wasn't illegal. Like, what if I was gonna buy like a watch? Something like that. Um, they have stuff on here. It may be a uh, intellectual property theft type crime, you don't know. Okay. It could be a, a fake watch, you know, so. Let's, he, let's go to apparel, let's see what's in there. Let's look at that, I could buy, a, there's a Rolex Submariner two-tone right there. That's a pretty good price. Probably not a real Rolex. Could possibly be, or it could possibly be taken from someone's house uh, earlier today. <laughs> Okay, well, let's uh, let's buy a watch. Let's add that to the cart. Do you want to pay extra for expression? Of thing? course. Silk Road is extremely user-friendly. It's like the regular web. Just click and buy. Except you can't use a debit card or credit card. Just Bitcoin.
just like that, I'll be the proud owner of a potentially but not uh, um, confirmed replica knockoff. Hopefully not stolen. Watch. And if it is stolen, I'm here with former law enforcement. So it's fine. Not fine. Not fine. It's not fine. It's not fine at all. It's day four of living completely off Bitcoin. And despite its value being down, I'm happy to report I'm still alive. So far, I've managed to feed myself and get myself out of the city. Not bad, right? But now I've got to do the one thing that everyone hates the most, pay my bills. Hi, good morning. This is Yasmin. How can I help you? Hey, how are you? Um, I wanted to pay my uh, Time Warner cable bill, and I wanted to find out if I could pay that with Bitcoin. Okay, what is Zipcoin? No, Bitcoin. B-I-T, coin. Hey, is this the dues department? It is. I got my bill, and I wanted to find out if I could pay that in Bitcoin. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Thanks for calling. You should pass New York Service Center. Would I be able to make a one-time payment using Bitcoin? Using what? Bitcoin. I never heard of that. We only take, like, a debit cards, credit cards, or checking accounts. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for your time. So the bill paying world may not be Bitcoin ready, but there are a whole bunch of amazingly random things you can buy with your Bitcoin. Silk sheets on Overstock, a new profile on OkCupid, a degree at King's College, your own private island, or my personal favorite, a trip into space on Virgin Galactic. And God willing, some caffeine. Do you guys take Bitcoin? Yeah, we do. Oh, awesome, nice. Found one, I found one right here. Um, I would love to get a cup of coffee, please. Would you like a $25 minimum? Would you like to get lunch or something? $25 minimum? Uh, yeah. Why, why do you guys have a minimum? It, it's so volatile right. that we could end up with, uh, you know, kind of getting hurt in the end. So we kind of okay. like to keep a good sized transaction. Wow. Um, that's a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess it's about 10 cups. I'll take 10 cups of coffee. 10 cups of coffee? Okay, yeah. I'll run it up for you. Luckily, I'm not the only caffeine addict. I got a crew full of caffeine addicts. Like, look at that guy. See that guy? Those people, caffeine for everybody. Here you go. All right, so I owe you twenty-four fifty. Twenty-four fifty, correct. It's amount to send twenty-four point five zero. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jerry Paul. Finally, a little caffeine, or should I say, a lot. Bitcoin might boast small transaction fees, but let's face it, that perk doesn't hold water when I have to spend twenty-five bucks to get a cup of coffee but I can't blame the guy for protecting himself against volatility. So why is Bitcoin so volatile? Think about most currencies like a big ship. They've got millions of people using them, so they're much more stable and are able to sail through the rough seas of unpredictable times. Bitcoin is more like a small inflatable raft. Because it's such a new currency, its user base is much smaller, and the Bitcoin raft gets tossed and turned by unpredictable activity. That means the price will swing and shift pretty dramatically. But over time, as more people use it, the little inflatable raft will grow into a big ship and will gradually become more stable. Some of these fluctuations are mild, but in February 2014, Bitcoin suffered a massive crash. One of the biggest Bitcoin exchanges called Mt. Gox, based in Tokyo, went bust after it was revealed that hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Bitcoins were missing. In February 2014, the world's largest Bitcoin exchange collapsed, and overnight, 850,000 Bitcoin vanished into thin air. The total loss was worth more than $450 million. But unlike a good old-fashioned bank heist, there were no fingerprints or any physical trail left behind. No one knows how the loss happened. Fraud, theft, mismanagement. It could have all contributed to the collapse. So what about the people who lost money? Is there any way that they can be made whole again? There isn't an FDIC or even a bank that they can go complain to. And for a lot of critics of Bitcoin, they're pointing to this as saying, see, we told you so. Policymakers and law enforcement officials are trying to get their hands around how to regulate virtual currencies. The lack of government oversight or regulation has been a major issue with Bitcoin. Advocates of Bitcoin say regulation could stifle the development of the digital currency, while others say regulation would help it become more stable and widely used. But how do you regulate a currency you can't hold or see? 
Janet Yellen, chairwoman of the Federal Reserve, set a major precedent and said that Bitcoin is outside the jurisdiction of the Fed. It's not so easy to regulate Bitcoin because there is no central issuer or network operator to regulate. After a rough week, Bitcoin may be facing a full-out ban. West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin is calling for a complete ban of the digital currency. Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia has since softened his stance, but he still believes that Bitcoin needs additional consumer protection. Senator, how are you? Real well. Good. We're diving into this uh, Bitcoin yeah. universe. You've been very vocal. My concern was is it promotes the illicit trade that goes on in drugs and things that basically we're totally opposed as a society in America. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know what? There's no backing, there's no guarantee, there's no transparency. We have no idea whatsoever yeah. how this is treated, who these people are, and what their intentions are. So your idea was like, let's, snip, let's just snip it in the bud. I came right out, and like I usually do, just jumped out and said it and did yeah. it. Now, with that being said, I'm not. I'm not opposed to a transparent, uh, legitimate uh, currency yeah. that has the backing and the oversight of the federal government. So what do you suggest? What do you think should happen? Well, I think the Federal Reserve has basically been the best at that, and they should be the ones that's looking into that and oversight, the same as they do our own currency. And uh, Our own currency is, uh, isn't so good these days. <laughs> but at least we know it. Yeah, <laughs> at least we know how bad it is. Yeah. Part of what I think was one of the motivating factors behind Bitcoin uh -huh. was the whole idea of, uh, you know, people wanting to kind of, you know, stick it to the man. People are, you know, it's like the man's always trying to put me down. I want to, like, be able to function outside of, outside of the man and outside of the government and be able to have currency where I don't have to rely on that type of oversight. Or Talk to the people that got, uh, <laughs> got taken down by the Bitcoin, not by the man. And a lot of times people are attracted into this that can't afford to take that risk. Right. So they get wiped out, or they f fall on hard times because it can could, it could vanish tomorrow. That's right. Tonight it can be wiped out and you can't find it. Yeah. It's so hard for those of us who aren't in this sci-fi world or in the, the high-tech world, if That's you will, right. to really get your hands around this and where it's going to go. Yeah. But it seems like it's not going away. That's what we do know for sure. And if it's not going away, the federal government needs to find a way. They can give me some assurance and security. I can tell you, when something happens, and catastrophic or somebody to a larger event, Who's going to be held accountable for that? Yeah. You follow me? Who's going to want restitution on that? You want accountability. Some. There has to be some. Yeah. The regulation issue is a tricky one when it comes to Bitcoin. It would become a much more stable currency if it was backed the same way as banks are with the FDIC. But on the other hand, that's the whole reason it was created. It was supposed to live autonomously outside of the influence of banks and government. We'll just have to wait and see if lawmakers and Bitcoiners can both be appeased. But moving forward, what does the broader future of Bitcoin look like? I'm nearing the end of my Bitcoin journey, and I know the basics. How it works, where it comes from, and what its limitations are. I also know regulation isn't going to happen overnight. Maybe the only way to make Bitcoin less volatile is to get more and more people to embrace it. This whole time, all I've been doing is trying to pay for things with Bitcoin. Hey, how's it going? Maybe Good. I really should have been trying to get more vendors to accept it. To you can download it right now. I'm bringing somebody into the fold supporting my own caffeine habit and pushing things into the future. Here's how easy it is. I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna press send. I'm gonna send you 3.75 US dollars. I go to your code right there. All getting excited. There. Sent. There we go. Boom. 75 and then 0 0.006 bitcoins. Look at that. All right, that's pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Another satisfied Bitcoin merchant right there. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, enjoy. Brooklyn may be Bitcoin savvy, but what about the rest of the world? Andreas Antonopoulos, whose speech at the Bitcoin Center inspired me to go buy some Bitcoin in the first place, has agreed to sit down with me. And the best place to do that is the coffee shop that I convinced to use Bitcoin. How are you? We're good, how are you? Andreas literally wrote the book on mastering Bitcoin. It's called Mastering Bitcoin. If anyone can predict the future of the digital currency, it's probably Andreas. It seemed as there were a lot of people who, just in the conversations we had, still only see Bitcoin as being associated with illicit activity. You know, buying drugs, Silk Road. Look at that Silk Road watch I bought. Oh, very nice. You like that? Yeah. Genuine artificial Rolex. <laughs> Genuine. 
That's right. A Folex. It's a Folex. So how do you get past that conversation? You know, what does it take? It takes time. And for more regular people to be seen using Bitcoin for legitimate activities, it can be used by anyone anywhere in the world. Any, any country. religion, any country, any language, yeah. any culture. Right. Um, and that's why it's powerful, because it's, it's the first form of international, transnational, uh, non-bank, non-government money. It's basically the Internet's money, the Internet's currency. I hope that you've had a glimpse into how money could work in the future. Yeah, you know, when yeah. you talk to people and you're talking about the millibits that you're spending and yes. uh, how many millibits there are and you're looking at the zeros, it's, it's crazy talk. But at the same time, it's also a real robust industry with thousands of companies, millions of dollars being invested, yeah. and jobs, thousands of jobs. The current run rate of venture capital investments and startup companies in this space is now exceeding that of the internet in 1994. Wow. So this space is growing faster than the internet was. Now. Exponentially. It's exponentially. This is the third wave of the internet. You know, the first wave was websites, the second was social media and internet interaction, you now have the possibility of exchanging value of tokens and allocating resources of creating real economic infrastructure on the internet, which yeah. wasn't possible before. And so if you think of it a bit as the third wave of the internet, you can see this is going to be pretty big. Thank you. Thank you so much. Maybe Andreas is right, and Bitcoin will be the next big thing. It could help people around the globe transfer money more easily and efficiently. But it seems like the technology behind Bitcoin is the real game changer. That confusing piece of innovation, the blockchain, could change how we run things like elections, IPOs, and lotteries. And even if the Bitcoin currency bubble bursts, the technology could go down in history as one of the most important inventions of this century. It might even change the world. But until then, I'm gonna hang on to what I got. Check out the time on that Folex.